welcome back to the show. So today is a fun episode. It is. Because we're talking about the thing that everybody uses. I mean, it's Everyone. just a staple. You, like, you have it. You always you have, have it. to have it. You right. really do. You do. And that is duct tape. Duct tape. Yes. I mean, it pretty much fixes anything. It's true. It, it does. does fix everything. Um, But yeah, we're going to talk about just the origin and the invention of duct tape and where did it come from. Yeah, which is how interesting because I had no idea yeah. until reading this paper. Right. And I guess we can get started with um the very beginning. So it all started in World War II. You know, I feel like a lot of things started from World War II. Like we had, what was it, donuts? And we had M&Ms too. That came yeah, from donuts and M&Ms. Some soldiers. Yeah. yeah, that was when a lot of things came to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it all started with American soldiers in World War II and the need for waterproofing some of their equipment, especially their ammunition boxes, um, to keep water and moisture out of boxes that held gun ammunition and sometimes grenades. Soldiers had to melt wax onto the openings of boxes and then stick the wax with a paper tab made from paper tape. Um, whenever they wanted to reopen the boxes, they had to pull on the paper tab to rip the wax off. Uh, and it worked to a certain extent, but often the tab would break because, you know, it's flimsy paper, and the wax would still be on the box seam. So they would have to take extra time and scramble to get to like rip the, ro the wax off of the box so they could open it. And oftentimes that was a problem because they had to do that sometimes while they were in the midst of battle they would have to take this extra yeah. time to get this wax off and you know how hard wax is to get off sometimes <laughs> well it made me think of like when you get like sometimes you get a drink or uh, like you have to open something with like the silver like little mm -hmm. sticky thing yeah. with the, they give you the teeny little tab and you're supposed to use that to rip it off right. it never works it always breaks and then you have to take a knife and like poke the middle and then like you know pull it off from the middle because it's all stuck on the sides right right so maybe it was like that yeah yeah, um, so this, uh, as I said, this was quite the hassle and in many cases very dangerous for soldiers because they needed their ammunition, but the boxes were closed. It kept the water out, but it also kept them out. So a solution was needed and someone soon would find that solution. And that person was Vesta Stout. Yes. So during the war, a woman named Vesta Stout was working at the Green River Ordnance Plant in Dixon, Illinois. She was packing ammunition boxes. That was her job. And while working there, she started to brainstorm term on a better way to package the boxes instead of using the wax because of what she just said it was not working well for the soldiers. So at the time she actually had two sons in the Navy and wanted to make their time and countless others um, in the war safer in some way even if it was just something small like tape. So as she continued her work um, of packing ammunition at the factory she began to realize there was a much more foolproof and time efficient way of keeping the ammunition safe from water damage. Her idea was packing the boxes and supplying the soldiers with a strong cloth-based water-resistant tape to close the seams and then make it easier to pull. So, you know, like, duct tape's so much easier. If you can get a grip on it and you mm -hmm. just rip it off, it comes right off. Yeah. But it's also very good at sealing. So she took the concept to her supervisors, but to her disappointment, um, they paid a little attention. They weren't, they, they weren't, weren't really thinking interested. it was a good idea. No. She was just some factory just worker. Her. She's yeah. like, oh, just you know, go away. But on February 10th, 1943, she decided to go with plan B. So her plan B was to go all the way to the top and write a letter and send a hand sketch diagram about her cloth tape to then president Franklin D. Roosevelt. Here's a few highlights of what her letter said. I suggest we use a strong cloth tape to close seams and make a tab of the same. It worked fine. I showed it to different government inspectors and they said it was all right, but I could never get them, the factories, to change the tape. And she ended the letter with, we can't let them down, the soldiers, by giving them a box of cartridges that takes a minute or two to open, enabling the enemy to take lives that might've been saved had the boxes been taped with a strong tape that could be opened in a split second. Please, Mr. President, do something about this at once, not tomorrow or soon, but now. So, uh, Roosevelt, who was also a parent of sons in the military, surprisingly saw the letter. That's amazing to me. Yeah. How, how did it get to him? I mean, <laughs> writing to the president, I mean, she went right to the top. She did. And I'm really surprised that he saw the letter. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, wasn't there a girl with Abraham Lincoln who wrote to him that he should have a beard? And yeah. somehow he got that letter he and he grew a beard. <laughs> well, I feel like it was different back then, you know? I mean, letters were more the priority. 
priority, so maybe they looked at them more I guess. than they do now. Yeah. I don't know. But surprisingly, as we said, he saw the letter and sent the idea over to the War Production Board, as well as a letter back to Vesta saying that her suggestion was being considered. Um, not long after that, she received another letter informing her that her proposal had been approved. Wow. That would be exciting. That would be really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, the letter also commended that her idea was of exceptional merit. Before long, Johnson & Johnson, which specialized in medical supplies, was assigned to the tape project and developed a sturdy cloth tape with a strong rubber-based adhesive that would originally be known as duck, like the bird duck tape, and not ducked with a T-tape. I'll tell you what, um, if I could be the person that invented duct tape, that would be pretty awesome. That would be awesome. Like, you are changing lives This lady forever. is like a legend. She is. She came up with duct tape. I know. That's like... <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> it is. It is pretty great. So now you're probably wondering why was it first called duct tape like the bird? Well, the soldiers started using it and they nicknamed it duct tape because it was waterproof like feathers of a duck. Mm -hmm. um, it was also known as hurricane tape or a hundred miles an hour tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was due to its ability to withstand massive air pressure. That's a very long nickname. 100 miles an hour 100 tape. miles an hour Someone tape. Someone go get me that 100 miles an hour tape. <laughs> yeah, if they can battle, that's not I don't, super they helpful. Yeah. 100 miles an hour tape right now. <laughs> Um, besides using the tape for waterproofing boxes, the U.S. Army realized that there were more than just one use for duct tape. Mm -hmm. Don't we all know? You can use it for anything. Mm -hmm. And it originally came only in standard military green, not silver. More on that soon. Mm -hmm. um, they started using it to repair Jeeps, guns, aircrafts, mending windows, and sealing ammo crates. Um, also due to its waterproof nature, strength, and built-in adhesive, soldiers would even use it as a temporary bandage for sealing wounds. How about ouch, that? Ouchy, ouch. Ugh, Ooh, ouch. I mean, can you imagine? I, I mean, it's an open wound, and then you rip that off. Ow! Yeah, I guess it's better, like, maybe if, you know, you have to apply pressure and stuff, it's better than having nothing there, because yeah. you have to hold it together. Maybe what they did is they took, like, maybe a cloth I think they probably put it, something and then, like, and then put wrapped the tape it. over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think, because I had one time. Story time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I was a young child and I had the brilliant idea of becoming a duct tape salesperson. <laughs> That was gonna be my job when I was whatever age. So I took the handy dandy duct tape and I put it all over my legs and all over my arms <laughs> and all over, I think I put it on some on my neck <laughs> and then realized too late that it really hurt when you try to take it off. I can't imagine oh, her mom, she would have panicked so awful. much. I remember like we even tried, I went in the bathtub because my mom thought maybe that would like get the adhesive off. In the end, we just had to rip it off though. Well, you got a nice waxing. <sighs> That was awful. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> story time over. Um, so basically the army was finding lots of uses for this tape. And after the war, the tape came back home with the men mm -hmm. and hence why we all have duct tape. Mm -hmm. Once this um, innovative tape was back home with the men, the commercial market soon caught on and many stores sar started selling the tape. And here's where that silver duct tape we all know and love started. So as we said before, when it was first used in the military, it was just a camo green for the military and it was called the bird duct tape. But not long after the war, Johnson & Johnson launched a metallic silver version called duct with a T tape after executives discovered it could be used to seal um, heating and air conditioning ducts, hence the name duct tape. There you go. So that's why it's called that. I've always wondered. It's an interesting name, but uh, there you go. Um, but it's funny. Interestingly enough, years later, scientists at the uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory did field tests on heating ducts and determined that duct tape was insufficient for healing leaks and cracks. <laughs> so literally yeah. the thing it was named for is the one thing it can't do. Yeah. That's hilarious. Because I think... I, I don't know all the details, but I'm pretty sure it would like under certain heats and stuff, it would like burn up with the docks and it would like put out toxic like smells and stuff. Well, yeah, so I feel like if you get it too hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. That's funny. Um, and so following the housing boom in the late forties, many homeowners decided to buy the new silver duct tape to help with home repairs and anything from A to Z. And since then, duct tape has been a staple in homes across America and the whole world. And now at this point, it is used for things it probably shouldn't. People overuse yeah. duct tape now. <laughs> like, now it's literally everything <laughs> Yeah, use for. Vesta is, is probably rolling in her grave when she sees people duct tape themselves to walls and stuff. <laughs> Who knows what they like, do? That wasn't the point, yeah. guys. <laughs> or like or like duct tape costumes full of duct tape. It's like, 
over you're over okay i will say those are cool though those sometimes are cool when they yeah. do like the, Done well. the dresses or yeah. the suits that are all duct tape that's kind of cool those are pretty cool yeah but also don't tuck, duct tape yourself because that's not a good idea um speaking from experience right don't don't either. do it no not a good uh not a good waxing product no <laughs> so our final bit of information for you which you might be wondering is why does it work so well mm -hmm. why can it literally do anything except it's one job which is ducks which it's fine so here is um what it's made from and how it's made to show you how why it's so strong so the initial tape that johnson and johnson came up with isn't really much different from the version that's still on the market today um there are three main components that go into making the tape uh the top layer is a plastic polyethylene uh the myth the middle layer is like a fabric mesh and the bottom layer is a rubber based pressure sensitive adhesive and it was originally manufactured simply by pressing the three layers together. Mm -hmm. That's how you would get it. Um, so the rubber comes from rubber trees and arrives at the factory in large bales. A machine mixes the raw rubber along with various sticky resins until it reaches the consistency of like a pizza dough. Mm -hmm. But not pizza dough. No. It's not, don't, don't eat, eat this. No. It's not gonna mm -hmm. be good. Uh, then the mixture is heated to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit and next the adhesive is ready and added to the cloth and the backing. Um, the cloth, sometimes called the shrim, lies in between the sticky rubber layer and the silver backing. It's made from cotton and it's a really a key part of the tape. Um, the cloth is what gives the tape its like, you know, strength um, as the threads make like a crisscross pattern. Sometimes if you rip it real slow, you can kind of see mm -hmm. there's like little tiny squares are all crisscrossed. Yeah. Um, it makes it easy like to hand tear um, and it keeps the tape stuck to the surface once it's laid down. Mm -hmm. It's like a little grippy thing. It is. Kinda it's like, like extra Velcro grip. or something. Yeah. Yes. Finally, once the backing is ready, all the materials are are like melded together and they become one. Once the layers are combined, the strength of the cloth and the plastic-like nature of the backing combine to give the tape the strength and durability that we all know and love. Mm -hmm. We all love duct tape. Yeah. Um, additionally, the tape comes out in one jumbo roll that weighs over a ton. <laughs> that would be fun. I would like to go that's see just a normal roll a at ton Costco. of duct tape. Well, that's true. We yeah. can just go to Costco. And then each giant roll can produce over 30,000 small rolls. Um, to get a smaller size, the roll is sliced into strips then the smaller tape strips are put into cores and then they're re-rolled back up. Uh, finally, the tapes are placed in their final packaging, sent down the conveyor belt, and put into boxes for shipment to arrive at our homes where we use it for everything. Yes, yes. So I guess the three layers together hasn't changed a whole lot either. I think the whole process is kind of yeah. similar. That's why it still works so well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's just the mixture of the rubber adhesive and then sticking that crisscross cloth in. It gives it that really strongness to it. Yes, you have your stickiness and then a strength at the same time holding it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good job, Vesta. Yes. Let's give her a round of applause. Woo! Good job. Yes, we love duct tape. It's awesome. And also, um, Gorilla Tape, which I'm kind of in love with too. Gorilla's pretty cool. It's too. really good. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's just like, it's the same process, but they add more to it. So that's why it's stronger. Um, but yeah, so that is how duct tape came to be. Yes. I thought it was really interesting. Um, hope you have enjoyed it and learned something new. Um, and comment down below what you like to use duct tape as or for. Mm -hmm. And now it is time for the news. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm calling out to all ducks in the audience. <clears throat> if anyone has expertise on how to, hmm, how can I say, undo being stuck by the tape that you ducks use, um, we would appreciate any advice. Someone in the office may have been playing a game last night at our <clears throat> monthly game night and thought of the great idea of duct taping two Where's people possibly fluff? together Where's not gonna say whose idea that was yours idea, Your <laughs> idea. that's not important um we just need assistance if you have any thoughts about ow yeah. i 
couldn't sleep last night. Guys, you just can you just like just like call our office if you have any ideas on how to get. Duct We've tape tried everything off of from arms. peanut butter. What did we try? Mayonnaise. Yeah. We tried. We even tried gardening tools. We tried Jerry's dynamite. All it did was burn our hair off our arms. Oh, it didn't that get wasn't the duct fun. tape off. Ugh. Our arms are gonna fall off, please. Are someone. you sure we use duct please tape? Help. Are we sure this is not something else? <sighs> okay. I, Wait a I second. I'm gonna die. Wait a second. <sighs> what? What? Have we tried scissors yet? And now it is time for the Taylor Treasure Box. It's going to be full of duct tape. No. No, it's not. It's not. I have story words. Okay. All right. Uh, what? You've gotten this question. Um, what kind of scar would you want and how would you like to get it? Hmm. It's a toughie. It is tough. I think I'd like it on my arm maybe like like right here or like right here and how would i like to get it i would like to get it oh i know i know i i think i'd like to get it if i was like in a movie and you know how they put you on those like like flying things and you're on like the in the green screen room and you're like flying around and they're like stuck on your on yeah. your back well i'd like there like somehow i'm in the middle of like a battle or something and something goes wrong and I get a cut because of it. And I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right. You're so in the midst of it land. and some piece of equipment did not work right. So that's how I think okay. it. Yeah. Cool. So I have story words and mine are pickle and teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I shall begin. There once was a man named John and he had a brother named Jacob and their last name was Jingleheimer Schmidt. And the one owned a pickle factory where they jarred pickles and the other one lost his teeth. So John, who owned the pickles, traded with Jacob, who didn't have any teeth. Jacob worked for him, and he gave him pickles for teeth. The end. Did he put the pickles in a resin or something? <laughs> how do you have pickle Don't teeth? Don't ask how it works, <laughs> but they figured it out. He has pickle teeth. Okay, well. You know, that reminds me of uh, the extra story at the end of the original Lorax. Remember the pickle factory? <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Actually. Oh, really? That's where my Wait, mind went. Wait, they had went. a song. Uh, you put the pickle in the jar and you mix it all. Something like that. Yeah, I don't remember. You push remember. the lever. You pull on the puller and you push on the push them and the pickle goes into the the jar. How do you remember that? Pickle on the pull them and you push on the push them and the pickle goes into the jar. <laughs> I don't know how you remember that. I don't either. I love that. You I used think, to watch that all the time. I think I actually like that one better than the actual And then there was story. the one about the guy with the pianos. The, the flying piano. Remember that one too? Yeah. Was that part of that same mix? I, think, I guess that was still the pickle story. Yeah. Because he got yeah. kicked out of the pickle factory and, and then he had the flying piano. Or, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Make sure to give this video a like and a comment and make sure to subscribe. And after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box. And you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, which is at Taylor Treasures Official. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're gonna name things as fast as we can that you can do with duct tape. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Uh, 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 uh tape, tape a car together. Okay. Um, fix a pencil. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> use the sunglasses. Uh, yes, you could. <laughs> you could. Um, use it as a hat. Um, uh, use it as, as, um, shoes. <laughs>